Okay, this is, a, this is a weird one. This is going to be a quick video just to uh, provide some thoughts and some commentary on the Yevgeny Prigozhin um, events that have happened today in Russia. So if you haven't been following Twitter or the Telegram channels, uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin, who is the head of the Wagner uh, private military company, the Wagner PMC, has effectively initiated... A, a coup, it seems, or has at least started to attempt a coup in Russia. Um, he he released a video earlier today, which uh, allegedly showed what was uh, a, a Wagner Wagner camp. Uh, it looks like a densely forested area. Um, it appears as though uh, some explosion had happened and trees had been shredded, but there weren't any easily visible bodies that I saw. I mean, I saw one thing on the video. It was difficult to watch. I was watching it on my phone. It may have been a, 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 an arm or a foot. It was difficult to tell, but there certainly weren't bodies laying around everywhere, which the, which I'd been um, informed is what the video was taught, referring to. Anyhow, Prigozhin has claimed that the... Um, the Russian military had bombed this Wagner camp and he had announced that v Wagner forces were going to be uh, travelling with him and they were going to travel uh, up to to Russia and on to, to Moscow. Um, now, as it stands at the moment, Prigozhin seems to have travelled as far as perhaps Rostov-on-Don and Wagner forces are allegedly there. There's some video on Telegram and Twitter um, of of, um, of Rostov where it has it shows a number of um, military helicopters um, circling above the town. Um, there are some reports coming in that a Russian helicopter has been shot down. Now, I, I haven't heard this be widely corroborated, but reports are that a, a Russian helicopter was shot down, shot down by Wagner forces. Um, apparently the crew have survived with, with some injuries, but I don't think anyone was, was killed in that. Um, there are reports and videos of Wagner forces in the town of Rostov-on-Don um, surrounding and assuming control over um, some of the some of the administrative buildings. Now, while this sounds all very dramatic and chaotic, interestingly, some of the footage and pictures coming out of Rostov-on-Don are yes, there's forces there, but there's no fighting. Um, it all seems very calm. There's a couple of pictures of like a street sweepers just walking along, sweeping, and there's some armoured personal carriers in the background and a bunch of guys standing around. Um, there is a video that's come out of Prigozhin speaking to two other senior Russian military figures. Uh, I don't quite know what to make of it. It's it's an unusual scene. Prigozhin sitting there like he, he's strapped with... Um, armored um, vest on and, um, and perhaps weapons on him. The other two guys are sitting there looking um, in, at, at odds, but looking both concerned by the fact that they're having this conversation, um, but then in general, not too concerned. They don't have any weapons. I almost got the impression that it, it's the way that you might sit next to a friend who's broken up with someone and is ranting and raving and going on about it and you're sort of thinking to yourself this really isn't going to go too far but I'm just going to support my friend and listen to them now I may have it completely wrong I did get some translation some Russian to English translation of the meeting but it wasn't a great translation it's very difficult without spending a lot of time going through it or being a Russian speaker to understand exactly the context and what was being what was being said but Along the way, there's been, there's been some very interesting claims. Um, Simplicius the Thinker has put together an article today. Um, and some of the things which allegedly Prigozhin has, um, has claimed today in a number of the videos that he's released, um, one of them is that Prigozhin has said that the Ukraine has not bombed the Donbass for eight years um, and the Ministry of Defence of Russia is inventing facts to show itself in a good light. Um um after um 
He said that after the 2014, um, the presidential administration, the FSB and the oligarchs, they sought up the money allocated for the core of the People's Militia, the in the um, I guess the Donets and Lugansk People's Republic. Um, generals received money for dead souls. He says the Ministry of Defence deceives the public and talks about the insane aggression of Ukraine. Um, it, some very some very weird things. Um, said here by them um, and I, I really don't know what to make of it now Evgeny Prigozhin has been very very had a very high profile in the media for for months um, the whole time that the Wagner forces with the Wagner PMC were operational in Bakhmut it was the area of the fighting that we received the most information from Yes, he seemed to allow uh, his forces to uh, send social media updates of what was going on all the time. Now, um, during that period of time, he had some disputes with Sergei Shoigu in the Ministry of Defence. Um, so Sergei Shoigu is the defence minister. Um, there are a number of reasons why they seem to have differences, and this may be leading. This may be a part of of what's caused this today. Um, some of those reasons um, could relate to the fact that Shoigu uh, leads or allegedly is the head of the Storm Z PMC, which is a competitive private military company. Um, while they were fighting in Bakhmut, um, Evgeny Prigozhin announced a number of times that he believed that Shoigu and the senior ranking um, members of the Minister of Defen- Ministry of Defence in Russia were treasonous, were corrupt. He suggested that his Wagner forces were being starved of shells during the Battle of Bakhmut. Now, um, whether he was actually being starved of shells, I mean, we don't know. There was that infamous video from a month or so ago where he made this claim, and it looked to be like it was one night or early in the morning, it was dark, and he's, he started to, to, to make some of these claims that they were being starved of shells and that it had caused the death of 90 or 100 of his Wagner fighters. And then the camera pulls back and behind him on the ground is the bodies of these 90 fighters or so. The, 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 the area behind him is just, just littered with the laid down dead bodies of Wagner fighters. So whether this was a bad day and he needed to blame someone and was blaming it on being starved of shells, or there's another theory that, in fact, there have been conflicts between the Ministry of Defence, the Russian Ministry of Defence and Prigozhin, because they've had different goals. Um, The Ministry of Defence, it's been uh, theorised, may have wished to use Bakhmut as a trap. Um, the, 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 the term that's been used is as meat grinder. Um, because for a long period of time, um, the Wagner forces and then Russian forces on the side supporting the flanks formed three sides around Bakhmut. And you know there was a lot of Ukrainian chat saying that the Russians can't proceed, they're struggling with Bakhmut, they can't capture it. There's been a lot of people, and analysts and people that I follow who are far more experienced in this than I am who claim that actually this was the plan, that this was even announced by the Ministry of Defence as their plan, quite openly, that they believe the Ukrainians would fight for Bakhmut as at any cost, and so they kept the pincers open. They kept the three sides without closing in because it was drawing in Ukrainian forces, and their goal was not to take Bakhmut. Their goal was to attrit and demilitarize Ukraine, which is what they appeared to have done there. Now, this may have been in conflict with what Yevgeny Prigozhin and his Wagner forces wanted to do, or he as the leader perhaps wanted to do. Um, you could imagine that he... Was he would be aware that there's all this talk that Wagner can't take Bakhmut? You know, he he didn't want to be besmirched by that and look bad by that. So I can I can understand where he may have his goal may have been. I want to take Bakhmut. I don't want this to be a meat grinder. I've had enough of this. I want to take it, claim victory, raise the flag, and be seen as being successful. So that's a a point of contention. Um, the fact that him and Shoigu are leaders of separate PMCs, that could also be a point of contention because perhaps Shoigu's groups do get more shells than Prigozhin's do. I don't know. I, I, I'm not on the ground. I have no idea. I'm speculating here. Um, but another point of contention just recently, this is about a fortnight ago, was that Shoigu announced that 
all volunteer contract or all volunteer forces fighting for the for the Russians would need to sign a contract with the Ministry of Defence. Now, this would mean that um, Prigozhin and his Wagner fighters would need to sign contracts giving over control of their operations to the Ministry of Defence. Now, the the Ministry of Defence story was that this would provide better conditions for these fighters, more pay for them, um, more uh, more pay if they were to be killed to their families and these type of things, and medical assistance if they were injured. Um, uh, clearly, Prigozhin would have seen this as an attempt to take control of him. And that may well be what has driven it. It may be because it, Prigozhin has been very vocal for a long time about his um, mistrust of the upper echelons of the Russian Ministry of Defence. It may be that either Putin or Shoigu and the Defence Minister and the generals have decided that they had had enough. Um, and he may have got wind of this. So there's there's a, there's a number of things that you know different theories going around at the moment, and um, um, the timing of it is interesting. So right now, after these two and a half weeks of the uh, Ukrainian counteroffensive, which appears to be stalling, Russia seems to have the upper hand. Um, there is there's reports coming out from just yesterday and today of the Russians starting to make advances in some areas because they feel there's they're sensing weakness in the Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainians have paused to regroup to lick their wounds, um, and this has happened now. So maybe, maybe it's a real coup attempt. Maybe. Prigozhin, who has been popular and who has the loyal support of his Wagner f- forces, and I, I don't, I'm not sure of the number. I think that might be as many as thirty thousand and maximum numbers, perhaps. Um, maybe it is a real coup attempt, or maybe he's doing this as a lever to get Shoigu out of power, to remove um, the defence minister Shoigu. Perhaps he's um, with now with apparently the um, the the movement in the occupation of uh, Rostov on Don, that that city there. Maybe they're looking at holding them to ransom. Um, from the video I, I was watching of him and the two other senior members talking before, that's something I could understand. It seems real. It seems like he's actually moved to this area. His forces are there. And he's very upset about the state of play um, and, and very critical of the government. Although I've noticed, I've never heard it reported that he's critical of Putin. I haven't seen him come out and say that Putin is treasonous to Russia or is corrupt. It's always been a, a layer down, the defence minister, um, the Ministry of Defence senior senior members. Um, this spins out another thought in my mind that perhaps Putin is aware of Prigozhin's activities and uh, perhaps even approves of them. I don't, don't know if that is the case. Um, thus far today, I haven't heard anything, um, any comments from Putin about this um, about the about the events. There have been a number of generals though who have um, commented. Um, so what could be going on? I mean, Prigozhin could be working with the um, with the Ukrainians. He could have he could have been turned somehow. Maybe he's just seen he's seen too much and he's been turned. I, I don't think that that is likely, but it, I guess it's a it's a possibility. I mean, sorry for those of you who are just listening to this. My camera is just refusing to um, work and focus. I'm going to give up this camera and get another one for next time. Anyhow, um, that's what that that's one thing that could happen. Um, he, he's, he's working with with the Ukrainians to effectively backstab the Russian military. I think that's unlikely. Um, he could be working with Putin. So this is something that Simplicius the Thinker has suggested. Maybe he's working with Putin because Putin's had enough of the. Um, of the defense minister for some reason of the of the russian military um leadership and so in this way he's helping putin form a case um to to remove those um to remove those people i i I don't know um it's it's possible that that could could be the case um maybe putin is looking to move remove prigozhin maybe he's actually put word out that it's time for him to go I don't think this is the case because if that were the case, then I think that Prigozhin would have mentioned Putin directly in his statements and would have called him out. 
um, perhaps though m more likely possibly is that the Ministry of Defence and Shoigu are looking to move Prigozhin. Maybe they've had enough. Maybe they've had enough of his activities over the last few months, um, the whinging and complaining about a lack of shells, and maybe they've decided that it's time for him to go. And Prigozhin has got wind of this. He may have he may have heard that okay, there's a plan for you to be ousted, and so he's thought, well, this is my only chance. I'm going to go and make a play and try and get some leverage, take control of this town, Rostov-on-Don, and then I will use that to stop them taking me out. Perhaps that sounds like that to me. That sounds like it could be one of the feasible possible ideas. Um, another one could be that maybe this is a very well coordinated, very well thought out and played out Russian military psyops, a um, Muskarovka, a military deception. Maybe this is the Russians playing a long game for some purpose, perhaps later today, tonight, a massive Russian military offensive will start and they'll push all the way to the Dnieper. I don't know, but that could be another possibility um, that would explain why such an unusual left field sort of event has has occurred. Um yeah, look, at, the, at this stage, um, I'm keeping a track of things as I can on, on Twitter and Telegram. There is clearly a, a lot going on. Um, Dmitry Rogozin has just been quoted as saying that the um, he's a former deputy prime minister of Russia, that um, he's basically said, look, we're in the middle of a war. Your allegiance should be to your country. Put your political aspirations aside for now and just get on with doing the job. So... From reading that, um, some of the other Russian generals um, released videos during the day indicating that, well, not indicating, but where they were speaking in the videos to um, Prigozhin and um, calling for calm. So General Sur uh, Surovikin did this. Interestingly, he had a machine gun sitting across his thighs during the, the video, which was the camera was just the, uh, low enough to show that. Um, so he's calling for calm. Um, Dmitry Rogozin is saying, look, pull your head in effectively. So perhaps really this is actually a, at least if not a real coup attempt, at least a push for leverage to get some change in the Ministry of Defence, maybe get Sergei uh, um, Suge Shoigu ousted, perhaps. How it will work out, I, I don't know. But very interesting uh, very interesting topic to keep an eye on. Um, there will be more out. This will be all over Telegram and social media tomorrow, no doubt. It'll be interesting to see what happens on the battlefront as well while this is going on. Mm -hmm.